Uh oh, my head went giant. I hate that. I'm not sure why my phone and my Facebook will do that all of a sudden on some of the filters. My head will just go giant, which is really creepy, especially on this black and white filter where it shows every wrinkle. Mm. That's why I don't usually use these. But I like to play with the filters, and this is a great spot to play with the filters on because it's just me journaling my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the online world of business. And it's been three, three years now, a little over three years. Uh, since I decided that I was going to figure out this online world, do some things online. Prior to that, I spent over a quarter century plus 47, I know it's really embarrassing to say, 47 years in different businesses and industries, like at least 20, 20 plus, 27 or so different businesses and industries. And I haven't counted up the ones online, the different things that I've tried, the different businesses that I've tried online. I should probably do that as well. It's definitely not 20, it's probably three or four, but it's just a couple of things that some have worked, some haven't. Some have been really fun and exciting. Some have just plain flopped. And that's part of what I talk about and share in this particular segment. Uh, obviously, 1,006 days is a long time. And I didn't start doing this um, as a journal and as a video journal or a vlog, whatever they call it these days. Initially, I didn't. I was probably online for about eight months or so before I started actually getting brave enough to show up on video and do a video every day. And part of why I did it is because I have vision challenges and I needed to find a way to document things and keep track of the things I had tried so I wouldn't keep doing them over and over again without having to write it down or keep a, a record or track of it somehow. So this is my way of doing that. Plus, it's also a way of capturing some of the dumb things I've done so that I don't do them again. And so hopefully I can prevent other people from doing them as well. So what am I doing? What am I working on right now? Right now in the COVID-19 era, I'm doing challenges. I've been doing challenges for decades, literally decades I've been doing challenges for. Uh, before the internet, I did them um, in the old fashioned way offline, off, 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 off the internet, if you can imagine a time before the internet. And now we're seeing challenges everywhere, right? Challenge here, challenge here, challenge for this, challenge for that. Challenges for everything because marketers have gotten a hold of the strategy and now this is the latest, greatest way to bring high paying, high ticket clients into your business. Um, kind of makes me want to hurl a little, but that's okay. People do what works for them. I'm going to keep doing what I do. I do, and I, my favorite has seemed to roll into at least this year during COVID, 30 day challenges. I like a 30 day challenge to get up and go and do something. Why? Because it's a short enough time that people actually can and will stick to it, but it's a long enough time to actually get an incredibly cool result. Five day challenges, 10 day challenges are for marketing purposes only. They say they're for five days, but on the third day, they already start selling you their, their thing, right? They already, and a lot of them now on day one, they start pre-framing you and setting you up to buy their thing at the end, which is great. It's a great strategy. It's a great marketing strategy. It's not for me. I think that it's, manipulative and I don't like manipulative strategies, especially in, in marketing. And there's so much of that going on. There is so much manipulation of human beings already. I choose not to participate. It's like what you see is what you get. Right now you see a, a cartoon wrinkled lady. What you see is what you get. And that's part of why I show up every day as well is because I don't want people to say, oh, you're this fake person when we see you on camera once a month or once a week or twice a week or whatever. But when I meet you in person, you're a totally different person. Um, nope, same person all the time. Now, was I always that way? Probably not. Probably early in my corporate career. I, I guarantee I wasn't. I didn't show up 100% as myself in my corporate career because I never would have gotten promotions. I never would have gotten a job. I never would have advanced because in the culture and the environment that you're in, you're expected to behave in a certain way. That's called... Um, the culture of the organization and either you fit into it or you don't. Now I found after 25 years, I, I wasn't happy in the corporate culture. It is a box that many people fall right into and fit perfectly in and are super comfortable and super successful. And me, not so much a box person. So uh, after 25 years of, and, and I had a really successful career. Don't get me wrong. I can't complain about my corporate career at all. It was awesome. I learned so much and had so many incredible opportunities that other people have never even experienced that and I learned so much from some of the trainings and the and the experiences that I had I would not trade that for the world but at some point it was like yeah I'm kind of done with with this I'm I'm done answering to someone else and and being on their schedule their time their clock 
their expectations of me, you know, and, and it was as corporate America was going from the, you know, you had a job, you went to the job and you could go home, which I never really did. But it was like, you were expected to be on 24 seven call, no matter what. And you, you never really got any time off. If you were on vacation, we were still going to call you and ask questions. And, and that got to the point where, yeah, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to own the thing and I'm going to actually have control of it and I'm going to set it up. So guess what? I don't have to work 75 hours a week and then still be on call the hours that I'm not there physically. Uh, so started doing this. So challenges are my thing now. I, I'm just finishing up the get up and go 30 day challenge. This is the fourth time I've gone through it. Different challenge every time. A lot of people will do a five day challenge and then they do it over and over again every every six weeks or every other month to bring new people into their, their high ticket program or their coaching program or whatever. I just do it. The get up and go challenge is 100%. I'm doing this to help teach people a framework to guarantee that they will be better off after any challenge or change that they face than before they faced it. If they had just, if they just keep doing it their old fashioned way and they don't consciously have a way to, to make sure that, and, and we install it in our subconscious so that we're always running through the framework every time we're faced with a change or a challenge. A big one like COVID-19, losing our job or getting married or having a baby or um, getting in an accident or having a health challenge to, you know, deciding where you're going to go to eat for dinner, deciding, you know, if you want the blue dress or the red dress, whatever, you can use it for everything. It's, it's basically a framework and a foundation that will make sure that you always end up making the best choice for you. Might not be the best choice for anybody else or your best friend, but it is the best choice for you at the time, at the time that you make that decision or choice. So get up and go challenge today was about the biggest lessons learned in this 30 day challenge. And so I just went through a little brainstormed list of, okay, these are the things that I've learned and realized going through this challenge, realizing that it's not my first time through it. Somebody that's going through it for the first time may have different ahas, different lessons learned than I did. So just ran through, I think it probably talked about maybe 10 ish of those that I just, it's not hard to come up with, okay, what did I learn from this? Because my brain automatically works. It's a framework that I've installed in myself to always look for the lesson. Why? Because I didn't used to look for the lesson. And guess what happens if I don't look for the lesson? I will have another experience that will try to show me and enlighten me on that lesson. So uh, everything I do, every project, everything, I, I stop, take a deep breath and say, okay, what did I learn from this? What, where, where did I do okay? Where could I have done better? Where did I totally miss the boat and screw up? Because every project, there's all, all of those aspects, right? Things we do well, things we could have done better, and things we absolutely messed up on that are mistakes we don't want to make again. And if we don't pause to reflect on those things, we are destined to make those mistakes again. We might have another successful project, but we want to always be getting better and better and better. Not just, oh, I did this at work, I'm going to do it again, and then just keep doing the same thing. Because what works today won't necessarily work tomorrow. So we always want to be keeping up with um, our own personal development and progress and, and the way we show up in the world. A fun challenge today was about fairy tales. And it said someday you'll, as you get older, you'll read fairy tales again. So we shared our favorite fairy tale. Uh, Supersize Your Business was about spare the rod or and spoil the child and about, you know, corporal punishment and spanking. And what do you think and how do you feel and what do you believe in that? But then twisted to how do you use this spare the rod, spoil the child philosophy in your business to help grow and build and supersize your business today. So those are the three main uh, pieces of content that I create every day. Plus I do a practice run on my Facebook profile of the idiom of the day. And I talk about that more toward, Hey, this is the idiom. This is what it means. This is where it came from. And this is how you could use it in your life right now. And maybe some examples or stories of that. And then I tweak it to be with respect to business for my supersize your business page. And I also then do this. I just do a quick video log, not always quick, sorry, diarrhea of the mouth <laughs> to describe and, and share some of the things I'm doing and learning. Now, my big Next thing is, what am I doing with the Get Up and Go Challenge next? I think that I'm, I'm as the more I talk about it, I talked about it today on the Get Up and Go Challenge page. I'm thinking that I will do another Get Up and Go Challenge for the month of December. I think December, the end of the year, is a great month because people have a lot more free time, believe it or not, because we're not going out shopping right now. We're doing online shopping this year for sure. Um, although things like the Mall of America are open. I haven't been there, but I have friends and and family that have been there. Um, so there's places that, that you can go still. I guess I was at a mall to do a pickup for my daughter of 
something that she got and there was like nobody in there. I, it was actually, you got your mask on. It was super comfortable to shop because there's nobody there. Uh, I, I suppose that might change during the holidays, but I think the stores in, in our area, I have limits on them, how many people can be in and stuff. So I, I am in the health challenge, so I choose to be careful. I'm in that age group now where we've got to be careful. I've had health challenges in my life. I need to be careful. That's my responsibility. I, I want other people to be safe and, and things too, but I'm not going to freak out and stop my life because um, there's a virus going around. There's, there's, guess what? There's always viruses going around, right? Anybody had a cold? Anybody had the flu? Me? Every year, right? And I've, I'm, I'm still here. So... Uh, I need to decide what I want to do with the Get Up and Go Challenge. I think November I'm going to take off. We'll do a couple more days of the Get Up and Go October Challenge. We'll do tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 31st. We're going to talk about each day, the summary, and then the 30-plus tools we talked about and covered during that challenge. And I think then for November, I'm going to go through and continue to cover a tool a day, just one a day. If I do more than one, it gets to be 20 minutes. So I'm going to do, I'm going to say one tool a day for the month of November, uh, what um, what it is, what you could use it for, some examples of how I've used it and, and the results I've gotten in the past and how you might use it right now. Sounds a lot like idiom of the day, doesn't it? So we'll do a tool a day for the month of November. And I think December 1st, we will start the fifth round of the Get Up and Go Challenge for 2020. And that will be our fifth and fifth and final round of the Get Up and Go Challenge. Again, those those recordings, all of those previous challenges, plus all of the lessons in between the challenges are available on the Get Up and Go Challenge page for absolutely free. They're also in a unit six, but all the units in the Get Up and Go Challenge in the free Get Up and Go Challenge group page where it's a smaller group. It's a more intimate group. It's private. It's And you can comment and say things in there that you might not want to say in the public group, right? In the public page, not the public group, in the, on the public page. It's a private group, made it a private group on purpose. So we can say what we want to say in there. And again, always be kind. Treat people the way you want to be treated. So it goes without saying that we treat people kindly in there. But you can share some of your deepest concerns or questions or things you might not want to ask in a public group. You know, seems like nowadays everybody will go on Quora or Google and ask stupid questions and they don't think twice about it. But some of us don't like to look stupid, so we don't like to ask questions in public places. So those are the things I'm working on. Other things too, but it's a holiday weekend. So I consider Halloween a holiday. One of my one of my favorite holidays actually is Halloween. I don't, I don't tell people that very often, but I freaking love Halloween. I've always loved Halloween, even you know as a kid and as an adult. I used to, before I got married, had a Halloween party every year. We had a Halloween costume party, and it was always just a blast and super duper fun. So that's it. That's all I've got today. Go out, make an absolutely awesome day. Questions, concerns, challenges in any area, ask me in the comments below or direct message me and I will point you in the direction. I might not know the right answer for you or the answer because God knows I don't know everything, but I can at least help you to keep moving forward to get the answers and to create what it is that you want. All right. Have a great day. See you with you tomorrow.